Welcome to the video on building a recurrent neural network, RNN, for generating text. I already explained the theory of RNN in a previous video. Now we're going to create the RNN using PyTorch. You can consider the RNN of today's video another small language model. Here we are importing the necessary libraries to build and train our RN for generating text. Then we focus on reading and pre-processing text data which will be used as input for training the RNN model. Let's break down its input and output. The input to this code is the text data stored in text documents within a folder named data. The code reads text files from this directory, reading and processing the content of the first 50 documents, as specified by the how many documents variable. The data folder contains several thousand documents, but for the purpose of this video, to make the video production faster, I am using 50 documents. The documents in the data folder are Reuters documents, a common dataset used in designing NLP applications. I will provide a separate code link in the description section of the video using which I created the data folder with Reuters documents. Ideally, you will place your text files in the folder titled data. If you change the variable, how many documents, equal to a number greater than the number of documents in the data folder, then the code will use all the documents in the data folder. The output of this code chunk is a single string, text underscore data, which contains the concatenated and preprocessed text from 50 documents in the specified folder. This preprocessed text data, now stripped of most punctuation, is what will be used to train the RNN model, and then we will leverage the trained RN model to generate text given a starting. This code chunk is focused on tokenizing the preprocessed text data into individual words. I am using NLTK's punct pre-trained tokenizer model to tokenize the text. Printing the words variable, we can see the tokens. These are the actual content of the text. So from the entire text content, we create a list of words. The words appear in the list in the same sequence as they appear in the text. For each unique word, we create a unique number. We also keep track of words against the numbers. That is, we have word underscore to underscore int and a reverse lookup int underscore to underscore word. Word underscore to underscore int looks like this. An integer against each unique word. Int underscore to underscore word looks like this. A word against a number. Obviously, the lengths of word underscore to underscore int and int underscore to underscore word are the same. Then we encode our list of words, that is our text data, to an array of numbers. So this variable encoded text contains corresponding numbers only in the place of words. It will be used to train the RNN model. This function, create sequences, is designed to prepare the dataset for training the RNN. It creates sequences from the numerical representation of the text, which are used to train the model to predict the next item in a sequence. Here, input underscore data will contain the numerical representation of the text data, that is the encoded underscore text array. CQ underscore length is the length of each input sequence that the model will be trained on. So basically create underscore sequences. We'll chunk the text, that is the number representation of the text, into sequence pieces of sec underscore length. With each sequence, there will be the next word. We create sequences of length 20 by calling the create underscore sequences function with encoded underscore text. The output of the create underscore sequences is a list of tuples, where each tuple contains an input sequence of words, of course in their integer encoded form. The sequence will have a length of length sake underscore length. The second element of the tuple is the subsequent word that follows the input sequence in the text. Of course the word is in its integer encoded form. If our sequence length were two, then an example is as follows. For the sentence, I eat rice, the input sequence is I eat, and the next word is rice. So I eat will be the first entry of a tuple, and rice will be the second entry. Here we have our RN model definition. The constructor initializes the model with the necessary layers and parameters. 
the input underscore size is the size of the vocabulary, that is, the number of unique words. Output underscore size is also the size of the vocabulary, as the output of the model is a probability distribution over all possible words. Hidden underscore dim is the number of features in the hidden state of the RN. We also use hidden underscore dim as the size of the embeddings of each word. N underscore layers is the number of stacked RN layers. In our RNN model, we later set N underscore layers equals 3, indicating that our network consists of three layers of RNN stacked on top of each other. In the previous video on RNN, when I described the theory, I used only one hidden layer in the RNN a stacked RNN. The output of the first RN layer becomes the input of the second RN layer, so and so forth. In stacked RNN, each layer of the RNN has its own hidden state. The hidden state of each layer is updated based on the input it receives, which is the output from the previous layer, except for the first layer that gets the actual data input. More precisely, at time step t, the hidden state of a layer is updated based on two pieces of information, the current input to that layer and the previous hidden state of the same layer from time step t minus 1. This architecture allows the model to capture more complex patterns and relationships in the data. Each layer can learn different aspects of the sequence, with the first layer capturing more immediate or surface level patterns, and the second layer capturing more abstract or higher level patterns. Stacked RNNs like ours with three layers are particularly useful in tasks that require understanding complex and long-range dependencies in the input sequence, such as in sophisticated language modeling or intricate text generation tasks. Though we have an embedding layer with the size of vocabulary and hidden dim length, each word will have a vector representation of hidden dim length that will form the input vector for the RNN. The RN layer is configured to have n layers of RNN cells, each with a hidden size of hidden dim. The batch underscore first equal sign true parameter indicates that the input and output tensors will be provided with the batch dimension first. We have a fully connected linear layer that maps the RNN output to the size of the vocabulary output size. This layer is used to generate the final output. In the forward pass of the model, x is an input sequence. The variable named hidden has the initial or the previous hidden state of the RN. The input, x, first passes through the embedding layer, then the embedding of x passes through the RNN layers. The previous hidden state is passed to the RNN2 and the new hidden state is retrieved. The flattened output is then sent through the fully connected layer to produce the output. The forward pass will return the output and the new hidden state. The init underscore hidden function initializes the hidden state of the RNN. It returns a tensor of zeros with a shape appropriate for the hidden state of the RNN considering the number of layers and the batch size. OK, the RNN model class is a complete RNN-based neural network. This RN model is suitable for text generation, which we will see soon. It incorporates an embedding layer to handle word representations, one or more RN layers, to capture the sequence dynamics, and a fully connected layer to produce predictions. The forward method defines how the data flows through the model, and init underscore hidden is used to initialize the hidden state at the start of processing a new batch, or during text generation, with a new sequence. Now we are setting up and executing the training process for the RNN model. The code checks for the availability of a CUDA-enabled GPU which can significantly speed up training. If available, it sets the device to CUDA, otherwise to CPU. Here are the hyperparameters, input size and output size. We set them to the length of the word to int dictionary, representing the size of the vocabulary. Hidden dim, the number of features in the hidden state of the RNN is set to 256. We also use this hidden dim hyperparameter to set the length of each embedding vector. N underscore layers, we are setting it to 3, that is, the number of stacked RNN layers in the model will be 3. We will keep 256 sequences per batch. The epoch, 
or the number of times the entire dataset is passed through the network during training, is 100. To keep the length of this video reasonable, I moved the rest of the content to the following video. See you there soon!